Happy Monday. How are you? A little different setting today. We are in the church. I'm trying to get this fixed. Whoop, here we go. How does that look? There we go. How do I look? Where's my entourage? Did they come with me this morning? Where are those people? Say this with me. Here I am. The rest of my life. The rest of my life. Is the best of my life. Is the best of my life. And the best of my life. And the best of my life. Is the rest of my life. Is the rest of my life. Hey, we're going to talk to you today about the best prayer partner in the Bible. Huh? You got a Mary minute for us? Yeah. What's she got? She's got something in her hand. I'm not sure what it is. A pumpkin. A pumpkin. <laughs> It's a season for pumpkins. <laughs> In children's church, we did this pumpkin. And um, I think we're all God's little pumpkins. Because God, um, the Lord picks us out of the patch. We pick our pumpkin out of the patch. And we take all the gunk out of them. And he cleans us up. And then he gives us eyes to see his word, ears to hear his word. See, he's got ears. And a mouth to speak his word. And then for the final thing, he puts the light of the Holy Spirit inside of us. And he lights up our life. Amen. Goes inside. Goes inside. <laughs> Thank you, assistant. Isn't God good, huh? The rest of my life is the best of my life. Huh? Hey, don't forget to share this video with everybody you know today. Amen. Because we want this video to get out to everybody. Amen. Also, you need prayer today. And don't forget, Monday is Blessing Day. So this is the day you call me for your weekly blessing. Amen. I like to speak the blessing over everybody every week, especially on Monday. Amen. And also, when you do your offerings and donations today, call me because that's, I want to really speak the blessing over you then. Amen. Hey, I want to talk to you today right now about the best prayer partner in the Bible, how many of you know that it's very important to have a prayer partner? And a prayer partner is somebody that you can get a hold of. Somebody who is always available to you. And somebody who can get your prayers answered for you. Amen? That's a big deal. You know, there's a lot of people who have prayer partners out there. Say, would you be my prayer partner? You know, we used to have faith buddies. Years ago, in our church, we instituted a program of faith buddies. Everybody had a faith buddy. And they would call their buddy, really it was like a prayer partner, but they would call their faith buddy to believe something with them. And the only person who ever got anything, who ever got any prayers answered was my faith buddy. I don't know if anybody else that did, maybe Mary's. Who was your faith buddy? Do you remember? Did you, you remember who your faith buddy was? Karen. Karen. Oh, Karen Vanderveen? Is that who it was? Different Karen? Another Karen. Anyway, it was a Karen. Mary had a... But most people would call their faith buddies, but they didn't get anything done. I mean, they didn't get any results. We're all about results. Oh, and I wanted to mention, we're over at the church uh, for a few days this week because they're putting a roof on our house. A roof. They're putting a new roof on it. Roof. No, it's not a roof. It's a roof. They're putting a roof. We're from Pittsburgh. I say roof. We're putting a roof on our house, and it is very loud in there. Jean's trying to sleep right now. She probably doesn't hear a thing. huh? She doesn't hear nothing. Anyway, uh, but nobody got prayers answered or anything or nobody really received what they wanted because their faith buddy didn't have any faith. Amen? But today I want to talk to you about the best 
Prayer partner, when you when you decide on a prayer partner, there's a couple of things you want to make sure. Number one, they're available. And number two, they can make it happen. A good prayer partner is somebody who can get your prayers answered for you. It's somebody who, when you when you go to them or you call them on the phone, you can definitely, you know, once you hear their voice on the phone, you're going to get what you need. That is a prayer partner. That is what we call a good prayer partner. Amen. I want to show you something here. Since they didn't have phones in the days of the Gospels, when the Gospels were written and Jesus was there, what they did have, uh, they had to go. They had to go talk to him. There was no, no way of communicating other than maybe sending a letter or something like that. And sometimes they did that. But the centurion came to Jesus. And he said to Jesus, he said, my servant lies home sick of the palsy. Jesus right away said, I will come and heal him. The servant said, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. Now, the minute the centurion approached Jesus and said, Lord, my servant lies home sick of the palsy. And Jesus said, I will come and heal him. They became prayer partners. Do you see this? A prayer partner is somebody that you are united with in prayer. It's like the prayer of agreement. The prayer of agreement in uh, Matthew chapter 18, verse 19. Jesus said, Jesus said, if two of you shall agree as touching anything on earth, it shall be done for them by my Father, which is in heaven. Two people agreeing. Well, any time two people get together, they have to be in agreement to make this happen. That's one of the stipulations. Another stipulation is you have to believe that your prayer partner can make it happen for you. That was very important in the days of Jesus. Everybody that came to Jesus believed that he could make it happen. Jesus would say to them, your faith has made you whole. Well, what was their faith in? Anytime somebody talks about faith, I want to know what their faith is based on and what it is in. Amen? Their faith was based on the fact that they had heard Jesus was healing people. That's what their faith was based on. Or maybe they saw him healing people, but it was based on the fact that they knew he could get it done. He could get it done. It's like the leper went to Jesus. He said, Lord, if you want to, you can heal me. If you want to, you can heal me. Jesus said, I do. Be healed. He, he had faith in the ability of Jesus. And if you're going to have a prayer partner, you have to have faith in your prayer partner's ability to make it happen. The centurion did. He did. Everybody who came to Jesus for healing had faith that he could make it happen. They did not have faith for their healing. They did not have faith that they could get healed from God apart from Jesus. If they had faith for their healing, they wouldn't have needed Jesus. Amen? Remember Paul, when he was uh, shipwrecked, he was putting some wood on the fire and there was a snake in the wood and the snake bit him and he just shook it off. And went about his business. It was a poisonous snake. And everybody waited for him to drop over. And he never did. Now he had faith in God's ability to heal him. He had faith that God had the ability and that God would. He had his own faith. He used his own faith to get himself healed. Believe me, he got healed of that snake bite, folks. That took some healing. You get bit by a poisonous snake, it's going to take some healing. And his did, and he never even saw any effects from it. But the people who came to Jesus didn't have that kind of faith. But they had faith that Jesus could do it. That he could make it happen. A 
And then Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. He's talking about their faith in his ability. And the centurion, same way. Matthew chapter 8, please read this story. The centurion said, I'm not, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only and my servant will be healed. Just say so. He had faith in the words of Jesus. He had faith in the ability that Jesus could just say so and make it happen. And Jesus called that great faith. That was great faith. Great faith either believes that somebody can speak the word only and make it happen, that's great faith. If you call your prayer partner and you believe your prayer partner can speak the word only and make it happen, that, according to Jesus, not me, according to Jesus, is great faith. There's a lot of people out there who call me every day or call me when they have needs. And they believe, if I say so, they're going to get it. And you know what Jesus calls that? He calls that great faith. That's great faith. Great faith that your prayer partner can make it happen for you. It takes great faith to believe that. People, now there's also some people will, who will call and they go, well, Pastor Jim, after I speak over, they go, how am I going to know this? And when am I going to know that? And, you know, and they're just asking all kinds of questions. And they're just speaking doubt. And they don't believe I can do it. And guess what? They ain't going to get it. Remember when Jesus went to his hometown? People did not get healed because they did not believe he could do it. They just saw him as a carpenter. That's a, he's a carpenter. What, what's all this? They got nothing. Nothing. But the centurion said, speak the word only. The woman with the issue of blood said, if I can get a hold of his garment. Great faith. Great faith. Jairus said, if you will come to my house and lay your hand on my daughter, she will live and not die. That was great faith. Great faith in the ability of Jesus to keep his daughter from dying. Jesus was the best prayer partner the world has ever seen. Amen. Tomorrow, I'm going to talk to you about the second best prayer partner in the Bible. You're going to like this. Don't forget today is blessing day. Call me for your blessing today. Also, when you do your offerings and donations today, Call me because I want to speak the blessing over you. If you made your donations last week, uh, then call me. I want to bless you. Amen. Share this video with everybody you know. Have a wonderful day. I love you very much, and I will see you right back here again tomorrow.